Well, it's a bit of a wacky idea when you look at it now, and I was trying to remember the other day exactly where the idea came from, and uh, I think it basically came from the realisation that we were going to have a very empty room for a full season, basically, and what issues that would pose when it came to trying to explain the purpose of the restoration project and why we're doing it. So I thought, well, what would be really great is if we could have a bed. You know, we're losing a bed, it would be lovely if we could have a bed instead. The restoration of the state bed uh, is the last piece in a jigsaw of restoration and redecoration and conservation of the grand state interiors at Kettleston, which has been going on since the late 1980s. About seven years ago, we undertook all the restoration work on the paint schemes, restoring an accurate 18th century paint scheme, repairing and putting fillet back on the walls, and of course before that, weaving an all silk fabric, that is an accurate replica of the 18th century fabric, and putting that on the walls, conserving the paintings, conserving some of the mirrors, and then the last real big hit was the furniture in the room, and of course the state bed, which is arguably the biggest and most showy item of furniture in the house, the real sort of crescendo of the state parade that people would have seen in the 18th century. The restoration project itself involves tons of people. We've got um, a great company that we work for with other elements of restoration here at Kettleston called Tankerdale, and they uh, do a lot of the physical work on the, on the furniture, so the woodwork and the gilding and, and the repairs and things like that. We also work with a company who made all the silk damask for us, we've still got loads of that left so that's, that's going to be used. Uh, we've got a wonderful company based in Derby doing our gold um, threads and, and laces for us and that's an amazing project. Gold thread is uh, something we kind of specialise in. We're involved in Little Gold Braid, which is weaving today. We're going to be making a handmade fringe, which has got a little header, which is hand-woven as well. And there's uh, a rope, a little rosette, which is going to be handmade, which is quite a complicated thing, uh, and some bobbin lace as well. The bed represents the wealth of the family. So when they were expecting a royal visit or hoped they might get a royal visit, they would put a bedroom together with a bed that showed as much wealth as they could possibly put on it. Your status as a person uh, and your relationship with the aristocrat or indeed monarch who occupied that state apartment um, was shown physically by how far you were allowed to penetrate in through that apartment. The state bedroom was the height, then there would be a dressing room and an ante room and maybe a withdrawing room. You had to be really someone very special uh, to get into the king's bedroom. So one of the challenges we faced is we really like showing conservation to people. As much of what we do, we would try and do in front of people. There are some things, there are some processes, some items that you really can't do in front of the public. And certainly the first phase of the state bed, the bed really had to be taken away for the first phase of conservation to take place. So we sort of had an option. We could either put up some text panels and perhaps a bit of a TV screen talking about it, or we could do something different actually to fill the gap in the room. And I think that's what led our thinking towards the idea of actually having an interactive bed.
I'm Maria Kateas and I am a director here at Setworks and we are a creative fabrication company. The reason that we're producing a bed for Kedleston is because the original bed has been removed for restoration. The thinking was that it should be almost a memory of the original bed and allude to the original bed, but not somehow try and mimic its incredible detail, um, its, you know, its presence and its history. I thought, well, it could be a bed that people could climb into and it could be a bed that people could actually lie in and see what the room looks like from the angle of a king and it stops them from having that idea that, that the National Trust House is all about you mustn't touch and you must stay beyond the rope and you, you know, try and bring these houses a bit more to life and a bit of the understanding about what's relevant about them and what's important about them. So another element of, of the bed that we worked on developing for this was that it wouldn't just be a bed that people could jump around on and, and lie in, that actually it would tell part of the story of what the real bed is about. And so as they lie in bed, <laughs> they uh, get to see some lovely moving footage of um, what the real bed looks like, the, the beautiful gold and, and the damask silk and the palm trees and the fronds and everything like that. The intention is to give people a feel for what the real bed is all about and that this is a temporary structure here to explain that restoration process and make it a physical reality for them to in engage with basically. The interactive idea of having a bed that people, people could actually sit in, lie in, and actually feel what it would have been like to be on show in those rooms, I think really reaches people in terms of understanding what the apartment and what the furniture was all about. It's here till October, and we're open till the start of November, and we hope that for one month, visitors will be able to see the real bed going back up and then they'll be able to come back and see the real thing before we close for winter. So October this will go and the real bed will come back. <laughs>